Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do my absolute best to try and keep everybody awake, but you know, no promises. I know everyone's just eating, so we'll see how that goes. Um, brief introductions. So my name is Callum Mackay. I work uh, at Royal Smith and Zoo in R and D, specifically within Nera. So that's our tanning arm. Uh, and what I'm going to be talking to you uh, today about is zoology, specifically uh, how we assess the progression of tanning mid process. So, getting into it. If we can actually move. There we go. Uh, so just quickly, uh, what I'll be talking about. So first of all, I'll give you a little bit of context. So why do we need to be able to assess the progression of tanning with process? Secondly, I'll go into what the options were that we tested in order to do that, uh, how we tested it and what we found out. And then a little bit onto how to work with the indicator that we found to be the best option for us. So straight away, a bit of background, what actually is zoology? So Zeology is a tanning agent from Royal Smith and Zoom that is based on zeolite. Now that then begs the second question, what is a zeolite? So a zeolite is something which can be, uh, it forms naturally, uh, or it can be synthesized as well. Um, and it's based on aluminium, silicon, and oxygen. It's alumin aluminosilicate. Uh, interestingly, so those elements represent over 80% of the Earth's crust. Uh, it forms into a microporous uh, crystalline structure, so it has a high internal surface area, which is negatively charged. That makes it great for cation exchange, so it's used in lots of different industries for that purpose. But in terms of leather, a couple of things to know. Uh, so first of all, it is not soluble in the float that we add it into, so it is dispersed, not dissolved, like, for example, you would see with chrome. But apart from that, generally, the uh, the tanning process that you that you carry out is very similar to that of chrome. Uh, and what you get at the end of it is a white intermediate with a shrinkage temperature somewhere in the region of 70 degrees, uh, which is suitable for most end articles and at the end of its life can be composted. So briefly on this, because I know a lot of you will know this already, but what's the general sequence of events that we follow when we're tanning? So first of all, you'll introduce your tanning agent at a point where it's not very reactive to the collagen. So you allow it to, to distribute, you give it a bit of time so you, you fully distribute it throughout the cross section of your, of your hide. And then you alter the properties so that you increase the reactivity of the system and thereby fix it onto the collagen you tan. And you need to make sure that that's step two, so where you're waiting to get full distribution, you need to make sure that you give that enough time so that you get a uniform tanning effect. If you don't, obviously you have a non-uniform tanning effect, so you fix, pe you fix your tanning agent in areas before it's fully had a chance to distribute through your cross section. And that can have knock-on effects down the line. So, Putting that into context, so we're looking at chrome tanning in this one. So first of all, you'll introduce your basic chromium sulfate into your into your drum, somewhere in the region of pH 2.8 in unheated flow. And that will dissolve, as we mentioned before. And at this point, at this low pH, relatively low molecular weight compared to later on in the process, uh, so it's less reactive. And also your reactive sites, so your carboxyl groups on the collagen, they're protonated, so there aren't very many uh, reactive sites for the, for the crime to be able to interact with and fix. You wait until we get distribution, and then you increase your pH somewhere in the region of four, uh, and you increase your, your temperature. And in doing so, you increase the basicity of your chromium, increases the molecular weight, more reactive, and you those, those carboxyl groups, your reaction sites on the collagen, they ionize, become available, and you can fix in place. Great, and what you end up with, obviously, is your wet blue. <clears throat> Now, putting that into the context of zoology tanning, very similar process that we use. Uh, so you'll add your zoology somewhere in the region of pH 2.5, 2.6, again, unheated float. That, like I said before, is dispersed. It is not dissolved. Um, and what we found from our research is that the organics that are there, the organic acids that are there in your pickle, they actually break down. So they, they open up the silicon to oxygen bonds within that zeolite which helps to disperse them effectively and it enables a finer dispersion, which then obviously allows you to get to the deeper areas of the fiber structure. Also, another thing to note here is that the pH of zeology is higher than your pickle. So in adding it in, your pH will rise up somewhere in the region of 3.7. 3 you wait, same again. And then you increase your pH a little bit higher than you would for chrome. So you increase it up somewhere in the region of pH 5. 
And then those silicon oxygen bonds, they reform, you connect together the, the zeolites, they then form a stabilizing matrix surrounding your collagen, and therefore you have your leather. And what we've got here is what we call zero white, the intermediate. One thing here though, is that when you're tanning, you're adding a blue chemical chrome when you're chrome tanning, and you're adding a white chemical zeo zeology when you're zeology tanning. Now it's very easy to tell when you've got full distribution when you're chrome tanning because it goes from white to blue when you've got full penetration. Whereas with zeology, it's going from white to white. Uh, good luck finding out where it actually is. So we need another approach. The most obvious thing to use is an indicator. So an indicator will change color in response to a specific chemical species. Um, so for example, in you might use pH dependent indicators. So your bromocrestol green, phenolphthalein, for example, and they respond to the con concentration of the hydronium ion. Sadly though, they're not useful for us in this instance because they tell you where the pH is within that cross section. They don't tell you where the zeology is. Now, so what are we left with? We're left with the elements that constitute our zeology. So our zeolite, so that is silicon, oxygen, aluminium, Oxygen we can't use because oxygen is everywhere. It doesn't give us any specificity towards geology, so that's out. So we're left with silicon, we're left with aluminium. And you'll notice that the list here for ones that we've tested is a lot longer or triple the size for aluminium compared to for silicon. That's just because of the nature of silicon as an element itself. It doesn't, re it doesn't uh, interact with quite as many things. It's quite difficult. So just by nature, that list is shorter. <laughs> So these, this is what we've tested on the silicon side of things. So the silicon interacting side of things, ammonium molybdate. And on the aluminium interacting side of things, we've got pyrocatechol violet, PCV, alzheimer red S, and aluminum. So what did we do? What did we test? And how do they actually compare? So what we did was we took the indicators, the raw indicators, and put them into a vial in the lab. And we tested them compared to the... Uh, that those same vials, those same indicators in the presence of zeology. And we also tested that to see how that color change differed across the pH range that you might be processing at. So I'll just do the first one. So first of all, with Alzheimer's Red S, you can see it's going from a kind of pale yellow color to a deep orange. PCV starts off a yellowy, deep orange sort of color and goes to a deep red. Ammonium molybdate goes from colorless to a really pale yellow and aluminum goes from uh, really pale pink to a deeper red. Now, I won't go through each bit for all of these, but generally when you go across the, the full pH spectrum or the what you might expect to be processing at, you see that the most consistent one is PCV. It always goes from that yellow color, which is a native color, to a really deep red. So that's giving you the best contrast across all of these. A special mention to aluminum, that does give quite a good contrast at pH four, but that's not quite as consistent across the entire pH range. But then what happens if we actually put it onto our leather, our pickled sample and our tan sample? So in terms of Alzheimer's and red S in the pickled state, it's a kind of weird, dirty, pinky, purpley color, um, different to the yellow that we saw in the vials, um, but that then changes to, well, it doesn't really change. It's, it's a slightly different, weird, pinky, purpley color. Pyrocatechol violet, same color as what we see in the in the vials in terms of the uh, when zeology isn't present, but that then turns to a deep blue when you apply it to your zeology, zeology tan substrate. Blue, not red. We saw red in the lab, but we see blue here. We'll, we'll get onto that. And then the other two, so ammonium libdate, that is colorless and it changes to colorless. It's not doing its job. Aluminum, pinky to a deep red. So it's a, it's a good contrast, but not quite as good as yellow to blue. So I think we probably all agree PCV gives us the best contrast, but blue, not red. Why do we see that? So what you're looking at when you see, uh, when you observe the color that's been uh, from the, from the indicator, um, what you're seeing is the, the ratio between the uninteracted PCV. So that's yellow to but the interacted PCV. So it turns blue. We know it turns blue from the literature. So what you're looking at is the, the composite of those two colors. So when you've got no aluminum present, it stays yellow. There's nothing, to, so you've got no aluminum turning it to blue. So you just see yellow. 
when you've got low aluminium concentrations relative to the indicator, you have some of some of that indicator is turning blue, but a good proportion of it is remaining yellow. And what you see is a composite between that, that yellow and blue color, you see red. And then when you've got enough aluminium there, you've got enough aluminium concentration relative to the indicator, most or all of, uh, of that indicator will turn blue and obviously you see blue. And that's what you're seeing here in this uh, graph of the spectro here. Uh, at different concentrations of aluminium, you see amplification or reduction uh, of the absorbance at different wavelengths. So con to conclude the question of our previous, our previous slide, the reason why we see that red in the vial versus blue in the leather is simply a function of concentration. So it's the amount of uh, zeology, uh, aluminium that's interacting that's there. We didn't have enough to change it all the way red in the vials, but we did in the sample. And one thing to note here is that in the in leather, when you're applying it to leather, it's there's always enough aluminium present, is enough zeology present to turn it to blue. So the contrast is always from yellow, no response, there's no zeology there, to blue. So it gives us quite a nice contrast to see where that zeology is. So now we know what it is that we're using. Now we need to know how to actually use it, how to prepare it. So what we found is that when you've not got uh, as high enough concentration, when you're, so when your con concentration of PCB is too low, you actually don't have enough contrast to see the differences between where zeology is and where zeology isn't. So you have the potential for false negative judgments. So you you don't think it's fully penetrated when you've when you've applied it, when in fact it has. And then when you go to the other end of that spectrum, when you're using a solution which is too high in concentration, uh, you have a really intense, strong color change. Uh, and in, in that, you then have the potential to make false positive judgments. So you think it has fully penetrated when in fact it has not. And what we found is that the, uh, the, the sweet spot, the Goldilocks zone, whatever it is you want to call it, is in the region of 0.1% uh, pyrocatechol violet dissolved in deionized water. And that gives us enough contrast to see where the differences are but not so much or so strong a response that we might make those false positive uh, judgments. Now, another thing here to note is that the amount that you apply, so if you apply too much or if you apply too little, you've, you've got that same potential to be making false positive or negative judgments. So you need to be careful with how much you're applying. And what we found is that uh, by using a spray bottle, so an atomizer spray, that's a really good way to actually control the amount you're applying and make sure that you're making good judgments. So. Got a video here. Let's see how this goes. Where are we? Hey, there we go. Right. So this is a sample that's been taken partway through processing, so we shouldn't expect to see full penetration. We shouldn't expect to see it going all the way blue through the cross section. I'll just give it one more time. So this is, it's not fully penetrated. It hasn't. So you'll notice something there. There are a few different stages. So you've got your first stage, which is when you're first applying the indicator, and uh, you see that it's not had enough time to interact properly and change color, so you don't see where your zeology is, where your zeology isn't, so you don't want to be making a judgment at this point. Now you've got your second window, so this is your judgment window, this is where you want to be making your judgment, uh, so areas where you've got threshold concentrations of zeology, they will turn blue, but areas where uh, there isn't enough zeology present they will remain yellow, orangey yellow. And so you can see that it's not there. I hope that you can see that in the in the pictures there. I'm not, I'm not sure, I can't look over there, but that is what you see. And then you've got this third stage. So I wanna make, I wanna really put this out there that this doesn't always happen. So it's typically only in your thinner, really well opened up substrates. In thicker substrates, you typically wouldn't see this, um, but you then have the entire cross section, even when you know that it hasn't penetrated all the way through to the center, those central areas also turn blue. So you really need to be sure that A, you, you monitor whether you see these stages or not. So like I said, thicker substrates, you typically wouldn't see them. Um, and if you do see that, that window appearing, then you need to make sure that you make your judgment within that window. So now we know how to actually use it, what we're doing in terms of the application. Now we need to make sure that what we're doing, so the judgment that we're making, actually reflects reality. So it actually reflects what is happening within that sample. So what we've done here is we've taken samples at different points throughout the tanning stage. So at pickle, partially penetrated and fully tanned. And we've stained them with PCV. And we've also taken those samples 
and put them onto uh, the uh, SEM EDX. And so what that does is it shoots an electron at your sample that displaces another electron, which is picked up by a sensor. And based on the vibration frequency of that, of that electron that's picked up, you can tell what element is actually there that it's picking up. And so what we've got here is we've got aluminium at the top, I believe it is, and silicon at the bottom. And the line that's to the right of it is just a 2D representation of that. So at this stage, obviously, at the no tanning stage, we don't have anything in this, in this map that, uh, that looks like our sample because we don't have any penetration of the zoology going through into that cross section. There's a bit of background noise, but we'd always expect to see that. Now, I hope you can see this on the, on the big screen. I can see it quite well here. Um, when, you've, when you're part of the way through tanning, you start to see this, this top layer. So you've got your thin layer of silicon and aluminium coming up in those maps, uh, which has been penetrated through the grain. And then you've got a thicker band, which is coming through the uh, wow. coming through the flesh. And you've got a band in the center where clearly the zoology hasn't penetrated to yet uh, because it hasn't been given enough time. And that accurately reflects, or the PCV rather, accurately reflects what we see there in the EDX map. So when we get to the stage of being fully sand, I hope you can see the difference there. Uh, you see that that band in the center has been filled in. And in fact, so that is clearly giving us uh, an indication that we have got full penetration of zoology all the way through that cross section, which obviously is represented in the sample. So a couple of things that this tells us. So first of all, we can see that the zoology stays as a zeolite, so it, it passes through uh, our, our sample. So during tanning, it stays as a zeolite. So where you see silicon, you see aluminium, they're in the same location, so they don't break up during tanning. Great, that's nice to know. But mainly for what we're looking at here, it tells us that what we're seeing with the indicator, so the, the, the contrast between yellow and blue, is giving us an accurate reflection of where zoology is within that sample. So to take that back to, take that back to uh, the, the question that we had at the start, the, the title of the presentation, through using PCV, we now do have a tool that we can use to assess the progression of zoology throughout the tanning process. So just to really quickly wrap up, we need an indicator for zoology, white versus white. You can't see it in the same way that you would for, for chrome, for example, to be able to see the penetration through the cross section. The best indicator that we found, the best option to assess this is pyrocatechol violet, PCV. It gives the best and most consistent contrast. The application you need to be careful with because it's sensitive to concentration, the amount of application and time. And that when you're using it correctly, PCV does give you an accurate reflection of the elemental distribution within your substrate. Thank you very much. Um, and if you'd like any more information, please feel free to send me an email or go to our website at nearatanning.com. Thank you very much.